This video is sponsored by Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. And I'm broke! <laughs> I went to Akihabara with a purpose. I kind of went three different times uh, during the few weeks that I've been here visiting my husband. I went to Amiyami store number one and Amiyami store number two and also various stores within, um, I forgot the name of the building, but it's the building where Amiyami store number one is at. And I got a lot of things that I was looking for specifically and also some things that I kind of deviated from my list and just picked up because you know, why the heck not? First up on my list is Nini and Noelle from Burn the Witch, specifically their 1-4 scale bathing suit figures. They're so freaking cute and adorable. I've been sitting on them for a while. Last time I did see them at Ami Ami back in December and January, I just, I just couldn't get myself to buy them yet. I think it was more so having to deal with Nini's face. I didn't really like the ear face ratio, but I kind of got over it. I was like, you know what? Since we got trolled in May of some huge announcement for Burn the Witch and it wasn't really clear <laughs> what was going on and what we're getting for Burn the Witch, uh, I may as well just cave. Yeah! And surprise, surprise, I'm looking for more Bleach figures! Specifically the Ichiban Kuchi game prize figures of Kimpachi Suraki and Uryu Ushida. I don't know if I actually like the product of them yet. I did get to preview them back at Jump Festa in December um, and I'm still 50-50 on them but because I'm very wary of what we're getting of Bleach merch lately, uh, specifically when it comes to figures, I think I just want, I want them. I feel like I am trying to justify why I want them but I want them. Yeah. I feel like I'm always trying to justify something that I want. And like, girl, if you want them, you want them. I need to take my own advice because I'd be telling people all the time, and I'm a bad influence probably. If you want something, get it. Because YOLO. YOLO. I need to stop. And I'm also looking for the Code Geass of Bunny Girls, Shirley, Colin, and C2. I want them with the fishnets. I did pre-order the bare leg bunny versions of them a while back, but I canceled them because I was just like, no, if they don't have fishnets, I don't want any of them, especially they're going to be my first bunny girl figures. I kind of realized I might be talking about that's what I'm looking for, even though I just showed you all these bags of what I actually got. Uh, I'm just letting y'all know, I've already been to Akihabara again three times. Three times. I'm going one more time. So we'll see what my final outcome of my Ami Ami haul will be. And that is going to be a transition into a little sneak peek of the haul before I actually show you the haul. <laughs> This is the biggest haul I think I've ever done and may ever do. Maybe. Don't count on it though. <laughs> I got 11 figures and a big bag full of goodies just for my Nindoroids. So yeah, I have a lot to unbox. Let's just jump right into it. 
The first of my haul are the Golden Kamui Odehiru Neku Minifigure Volume Set 3. This set features the characters Surumi, Usami, and Hajikata. I just really love the essence of making psychotic antagonists cute and cuddly, especially Surumi. You just can't hate him no matter what crazy evil and conniving thing he's ever did. Well, at least I can't. <laughs> so I actually stopped by the book off near me before heading to Akihabara and found these little guys. They were roughly around 700 yen each, and I just thought, you know, I love the anime and started reading the manga recently and feel like it's just time to start adding Golden Kamui merch to my collection slowly but surely. I will admit, I thought these minifigures would be a tad bit bigger just because of the box size, but that's okay if they're not. I do think Hajikata surprised me with his details. I checked the bottom of the other figures too, and the details of the clothes are so cool. I think it's kind of like a hidden gem of these minifigures that could be easily missed. Or kind of slept on, to be honest. Hopefully in the future, I can get box set 1 and 2, which features all the other main antagonists and protagonists. I think it'd be a really cool idea, since I have a bunch of plants on my shelves, that maybe I can have these kind of do a peekaboo situation within my plants on the shelves. So we'll have to see on that. Moving on to the next part of the haul, I do want to warn everyone, I have gotten into a new hobby lately. And that's customizing my own nins. For a while now, I've noticed a lot of mutuals getting into this hobby, and it certainly inspired me. I thought it'd be a really good idea to invest in a box set of faceplates for Ninderoids. Good Small Company had just released Box Set Selection 2, which I've also learned that it contains the top 9 faceplates chosen by fans during a face swap design poll. I'm just gonna pull at random here, I'm not sure which faces are which, so at least it'll be a nice surprise for all of us. The first face I managed to pull was a crying and blushing face. To be honest, it reminded me of a newborn's baby's face would look like, and well, I think it would fit right in to either Mobs or Deku's Ninderoid. The next face I managed to pull, well, I think I'm going to call it the salty face. I did think I wanted to use it for Bakugo's Nin, but now that I think about it some more, maybe it fits better with Reagan's Nin instead. The third faceplate I managed to pull was, to me, a classic cat face, or maybe it could be I had one too many spicy apple juices kind of face. I think I'll just save it for a future nin I probably don't have right now. Okay, I was really excited for this faceplate because it had green eyes. I definitely knew I wanted to use it for Deku because of season 6. If you know, you know. I'm pretty sure these have formal names, but we're just going to go with what I call them. This one's called The Cheezer. The next one I pulled, I'm going to call Please Don't Wash My Mouth Out With Soap. I swear, I didn't say it. Next up, we have I Picked The Wrong Choice, A Star on Disapproved, and Now I'll Never Be Able To Romance Him. This one's a personal favorite. This one is Who Suggested Watching Cowboy Bebop? I'm Bored. Then last, but certainly not least, is Babyface. And that concludes box set number two. Now I'm kind of curious, I missed out on box set number one and I want to go back and check it out to see what it's like. Um, well, uh, so maybe people have mentioned this before and it went through one ear and out the other, or maybe it hasn't been talked about at all on how specifically expensive customizing nins can be. I'm showing you proof in the pudding here with my receipt. I spent anywhere on two different occasions in between 100 to 200 US dollars, which I don't recommend doing, on a range of nin parts and accessories. First off, I got two different bodies from two different brands. One is from Good Small Company. The other one is a Picodo Action Doll brand. I'm completely new to this and really don't know what I'm doing here and don't even know if there's a difference in the body type or the brand and the way it fits. So I'm just going to get these and try them out and weigh out my options whenever I'm customizing the setup of the body and the clothing. I did pick up the Simple Stand from Good Small Company, specifically the hexagon type. They look like they're just large enough to set up my nins in a more dynamic stance and setting. I'm not entirely sure what my vision is for my collection, but I do know I kind of want something that isn't just them standing around. 
I want them to be able to be more mobile and seem like they're moving around all the time and just simply enjoying their life on my shelf. And I did want to mention that the simple stand does come in all different shapes and sizes, so I would check out these type of stands if you're looking for something different than what comes in the Nin box. I did splurge on a bunch of different outfit options for my Nins. I mean, if I change three times a day, then why can't mine change three times a day too? I'm kidding, I think. This is the Picado camping set. I think it's absolutely adorable. I have seen pictures all over Instagram of Deku or Bakugo wearing this. I feel like Bakugo for my Nin collection would be wearing this majority of the time since that is one of his favorite hobbies is mountain climbing and camping. So stay tuned for that little Nin setup at some point in the future on this channel. Um, I wasn't kidding. I have a lot of options for my Nin, so let's speed round this. I got these Picado Action Doll hands, and they come with eight different hand gestures. Okay, this is a little bit more specific. I got these two for Tomoe from the Kamisama Kiss series. He's the Picado Action Doll that I have, and I really just think he needed a new kimono to wear and also a little cushion to sit on because I'm pretty sure he gets tired of standing and maybe he just needs to take a breath, a little rest every now and then. Plus, I think they look good together. Next up, I got this schoolboy set. I thought this was so darn cute, I couldn't pass it up. I don't know what nin I want to put it in, but I'm kind of thinking I'm leaning towards Shishomaru. I want schoolboy Shishomaru. I think he would really enjoy this outfit, even though he probably put up a fight about it. Okay, enough of these pre-planned outfits I got. We're going back to the basics, and I got simple black pants and a gray hoodie. Now, because one can never have too much black, I also got another pair of black pants, a black t-shirt, and a gray t-shirt, and also some black converses. Honestly, it's an everyday go-to in my closet, and now we can be matching. Hey, wait a minute, those aren't figure boxes. Oh, these are Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat snack boxes, which happen to be today's sponsor. Starting off with Tokyo Treat snack box, Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box where you'll get up to 20 of the latest, greatest, exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available for a limited time in Japan. This month's box theme is Mount Fuji Snack Venture, which has me even more excited for my trip and little adventure of climbing Mount Fuji next summer. I'm so excited because I feel like I get a little preview and taste of the fruity, umami, and sometimes even spicy flavors that are famous around the Mount Fuji region before I even go. I can't wait to start tasting the Mount Fuji green tea cake and a lot of these chip options that I'm seeing in here. But specifically, I have my eyes on the blueberry marshmallows. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, I've already gotten into the blueberry marshmallows. They have like this little blueberry jelly in the center that's absolutely delicious. I'm even excited to see that it came with a really cool drink. I've never tasted or seen this before, but apparently it's a popular vitamin C energy drink that is suggested we may need to get through a day of hiking at Mount Fuji. First off, this Sakura Co. snack box is so pretty. I feel like it's a crime opening it, but at the same time, it would be a crime if I didn't open it. Sakura Co. is a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box in which supports local Japanese snack makers. Each box comes with up to 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and special Japanese tableware. I genuinely love how immersive the Soccer Co. subscription box experience is. It always has a theme of a specific area within Japan. This month's theme is Saitama, which is a very beautiful city by the way. Highly recommend checking out, especially if you want to get away from the rustle and bustle of Tokyo City. The subscription box comes with a very helpful snack guide, but not only does it include information about the snacks and nutritional information of the snacks, it also gives us more cultural and historical background of the city itself, which the box is themed around. 
So I was looking through the snack guide from Stop Croco and let me just say there are so many good things that I cannot wait to try. There's the walnut mochi, the white chocolate fruit, the strawberry cookies, potato danish. This right here, the Saigoku pear gummies is divine. Just opening it up and just, oh, I wish you guys could smell it. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. But I really want to try the white chocolate fruits. There's apple. Because there's one thing about me. I love chocolate and I really love apples and having them combined together. Ooh, it looks like dried fruit. What is, what is this? So they soaked these apples in white chocolate, which is really cool to be honest. Shut the front door. Nothing ever felt as good. <laughs> that, that's different. In a good way. So it looks like an apple. It kind of feels like an apple. But when you bite into it, it has the texture of an apple. But it tastes like chocolate. And it's not overly sweet. Like this is the best thing I think I've ever ate. <laughs> this is so good. Continue to whirl so you can get the code for this. Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. are the perfect Japanese snack subscription boxes to not only quite literally treat yourself with, but maybe treat a friend or a family member. Please check out the link in the description to sign up today. And don't forget to use code Jozu to get $5 off as well. Finally, moving into the bigger figures of this haul, I got Izuku Midoriya, aka Deku, stealth suit version. As many My Hero Academia figures that I have in my collection, I am surprised with myself that I never had a Midoriya in Nendroid, and now I do, and I absolutely find him so adorable and cheeky, and uh, I just love him. This does happen to be one of my favorite versions of him as a Nendoroid. I have learned that they are coming out with a school uniform version soon. So best believe you'll be seeing those unboxings sometime near in the future. Why didn't I have this Nin in my collection sooner? I think this is even better than some of the scaled figures I have of Midoriya. And I even have a 1 8 scale figure of Midoriya in his stealth uniform. And this one out beats him. I think I'm just more impressed at how detailed the stealth uniform is for a tiny little nin and it just, I don't know, makes him look so great and I'm so proud of it. These next few figures I didn't buy at Ami Ami or anywhere in Akihabara. My husband and I won them at various crane game centers and I'm quite proud of us for winning these for less than a thousand yen because Lord knows we've definitely done worse. These figures are part of the Bondi Relax Time collection. The first one we won was Mio from Hall Alive. To be honest, we don't know nothing or anything about this character besides just her being cute, which is okay. We want more variety in our collection. More so me, I just can't keep hoarding all the My Hero Academia figures. And I think Mia just brings in extra cuteness. I really feel like I was missing out in my collection. And for a prize figure, I'm actually really impressed of the quality, the size, and the great detail that went into making Mio's figure. Next relaxed time Hollow Live girly we got is Hoshimachi Shusei. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Please forgive me if I did mispronounce it, but she is definitely one of the favorites that we got of the group. I don't know what it is about this figure, but she is just so cute and eye-catching, and I'm low-key kind of jealous of how comfy she looks. And I do have to say again, for a prize figure, she is made of excellent quality, and size-wise, I think she really could rival that of some of the 1-8 scale figures I have in my collection already. Next up, we got Idol Master Shiny Colors, Toru. She is cute, dainty, and probably my gateway into idol culture. I think she was actually one of the first ones that we tried to win, and yeah, it just kind of had a ripple effect from there, and we just could not be stopped. And moving on to the last of the bunch, but certainly my second favorite of the group is Idol Master Shiny Colors, Ichikawa Hinana. 
I have big plans for her to have her own shelf and be surrounded by books and plants. She just looks so adorable and cozy and that is her vibe and I want to thrive off of that. The details that went into her is impressive and oh, I just, I just love her so much and so glad that we got her. Okay, now on to the big girls. I can't believe I finally have the Burn the Witch girlies, specifically their 1-4 scale bathing suit figures. I spent practically a whole year debating on getting them and they are finally mine with a just, you know, a little convincing of the media doing the typical will they won't they give us more dance. With Nini though, I do want to point out I'm still struggling to like her figure, only a tad bit. It just goes back to her ear to mouth ratio. I just think they didn't really get it right. And in some angles, I do feel like it doesn't actually look like her at times, but that's okay because I do think the most important part for me really was the eyes. Taite Kubo has a very distinct style and they did capture that perfectly. Then there's Noel. She is such a beauty. I'm probably being a little biased here because she is one of my favorite character designs that Taite Kubo ever produced. And I do kind of want to add that both of the Burn the Witch characters are stunningly simple. And I feel like that really makes you focus more on the beauty of their faces rather than their whole bodies. Especially with Noel, I just feel like there's so much expression within her face. She's super aloof and cool and shy, just so many emotions in one, and I love that the most about her and her figure here. Finally, the last of this haul, this is my first love, my queen, Colin from Code Geass. If I couldn't get all three Code Geass girlies, then at least I needed Colin. Her bunny figure still has my jaw dropped every time I glance at her. Her pose, the shine, the simple details of her figure is so gorgeous. Her face alone tells me she's delicate and yet fierce. Seriously, I probably could go on forever about how much I love this figure and also love her. She's so perfect and honestly the best bunny figure I could invest in since being the first in my collection. Uh, yeah, my hair has changed since the beginning of this video because, well, it's been a few months since I've been able to sit and unbox all these figures. I would say I would chill out a bit, but, um... There's roughly eight more boxes somewhere around this room that I still need to unbox, but that's for a different video, you know? Yeah? Looking back at this haul, I feel like I should have actually went and checked out a few thrift stores in my area. Um, for people who are visiting Japan, please scout out your thrift stores, especially if you're kind of looking for something unique and on the cheaper side, you can find some really cool figures and anime merch at these thrift stores. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should make a video on that. Y'all let me know if y'all would be interested because I really think that would be such a wild and adventurous video to do. Yeah, anyways, I'll end it here. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And importantly, have a Jozu day. Until next time, bye.